it. There we go. Oh. Three, two, and one. Uh, well, Mayor Shane, welcome back uh, to Mayor's Monday here at WSAU, WSAU.com. Uh, first off, uh, congratulations on another uh, two years of job security. Uh, didn't have to sweat out this election uh, this time around. Uh, pretty favorable numbers on the on your uh, your first go round for re-election. We'll say it was your second go round for mayor, of course. Well, thank you, and I appreciate it, Michael. And yeah, you know, it's it's always tough. Anybody that's ever chose to run for an election and putting themselves out there, you and take the heat that you might get, and and the the internet uh, comments. Mm -hmm. Indeed, we appear to have lost Mayor Shane. Maybe we did. There he is. Now he's back and alive. <laughs> Mayor Shane, we, we, uh, we froze up on you a bit there, but you were saying, uh, yeah, very difficult putting yourself out there uh, in an election like that. And, and I would say, uh, obviously, this isn't the first time that you've run uh, for election. You were on the city council. You've uh, you served a couple of terms there before running against uh, against Zach uh, two years ago. Uh, it, it really is, you know, for the losing candidate as well, it can maybe be a bit deflating. You put yourself out there, take all the heat for your ideas and, and have all the conversations and then uh, have it come to not come to fruition. But of course, right. uh, you you end up picking up the the win um, uh, and it was pr by a, a fairly wide margin. And of course, that's uh, obviously not a knock on your opposition, but in the in the uh, process of campaigning. I mean, what did you learn uh, about uh, what the residents of the city want to see over the next uh, couple of years? Well, I think, the, you know, what I learned is what confirmed, and that's why I was reelected, that we need to continue forward managing our budget, managing our debt, while still trying to maintain city services that people are looking for. It's not about doing big, grand, splashy, expensive things that uh, cost taxpayers for many years, um, but it's just trying to find that right balance. Yeah, indeed. And uh, that's one thing that, uh, that you're, you're going to be doing uh, in the next few years with the transportation utility. We'll talk about uh, that in in just a little bit. But but before we get into that, obviously, uh, the election, you do have somewhat of a hand in in overseeing that, of course, not completely since you're on the ballot, but you do uh, still get a chance to see what goes on there at City Hall. What was uh, was the election smooth this time around? Was there uh, any sort of any sort of hiccups, like I guess we saw in Wausau, where we had areas run out of ballots. Uh, how did everything go? Yeah, so you know what I've heard, and and speaking with the clerk's office, everything was smooth, uh, no hitches. As a previous clerk, uh, I've ran out of ballots before, and it's like the worst thing that can possibly happen uh, on election day. But it's about you know responding to it and making sure that everybody gets their opportunity to vote, and that's the main thing. And and make sure those ballots are counted properly. But yeah, it is uh, definitely changes things when you are scrambling around to do a paper ballot and then um, doing a hand count on those ballots. Yeah, indeed. Uh, we just had one recount up here yesterday in Wausau. We found out we had uh, one write-in vote for Elvis. Now, the voter did not specify if they were voting for Mr. Uh, Presley. They did not specify if it was Mr. Costello or maybe even uh, former Kansas City Chiefs quarterback, Elvis Gerbach. Uh, those all <laughs> obviously would all be options. What's the strangest write-in vote that you've saw you've seen uh, in all the elections that you, you've been a part of as the city clerk? You know, so you get the typical, uh, the Santa Claus and, you know, those kind of characters are probably the main ones I've seen, um, but nothing too exciting. And then of course, some random person that, probably has no idea they're getting written, written in for a, a position. And, and so, mm -hmm. yeah, you just see these random names, first and last names and no idea why or <laughs> a joke, you know? Right. Indeed. And uh, yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, here in Wausau, it was in a very tight race as well. I don't know that Elvis made a difference uh, in the outcome. It was a two vote margin, uh, but it certainly came close, but uh <laughs> But yeah, it uh, you know it's kind of interesting you know maybe to know what the thought process is into into who they're selecting as write off. Of course, in New York City, it's uh, it's tradition that uh, New York athletes get votes for mayor. But I remember the last time around, Christoph Porzingis was still playing for the Knicks. Uh, his name was not spelled correctly 
on the ballot. So he actually did not get <laughs> votes. So yeah, but but you highlight a good point though. You know, even up in Wausau with high votes, that you know, you know, everyone's so focused on state and national elections, but it's our local elections that have this direct impact on our lives and the quality of our life and in our pocketbooks. And every vote really does matter because we do see ties. I've seen ties and there, there's usually some ties and these local elections are very important on deciding who our leadership's gonna be and, and the, the future for that length of those terms. Yeah, indeed. And that's why I always say no excuses, every election, every time, yep. show up, cast your ballot, even if it's, you know, you just have one or two things to vote on. Uh, make sure you, you get there and uh, and fill it out or fill out and return your absentee ballots. Uh, however, those need to be returned um, to keep this evergreen, uh, because that could change based on uh, guidance and, and court outcomes and things like that. Well, yeah. Every ballot, every time, make sure you get out there but, and, uh, and, and vote. Most of the, yeah, and most of the time it is a candidate wins in most of the local elections by wins by the majority of the minority of the turnout. So, you know, our, our, our destinies are being chosen by a minority group of voters and we're picking that majority out of that minority. And so, yeah, and it has a very impactful part of our lives. But I guess it's to each person, whoever they decide what their level of interest or participation is gonna be, but it definitely affects our local lives. Indeed. And, and as you mentioned, uh, one thing that's going to be impacting taxpayers greatly over the next few years in Wisconsin Rapids, you have passed uh, something that we've been talking about for about the better part of a year now, the transportation least, yeah. utility. You know, it, it seems like you've had a, a lot of input on this. Uh, it did not pass unanimously the first time around, so it did have to come back uh, mm -hmm. to the city council. What tweaks, uh, if any, did you make on it? And uh, Again, how is this going to impact uh, taxpayers' lives going forward? So there were no tweaks made on it. Um, it just had to come because it wasn't unanimous, had to come for a second reading. But yeah, it, you know, for a residential customer, it's going to be roughly $20 per year. And so that $20 that we'll be paying yearly, or you know, the totality over the year, is that we, we won't see those special assessment bills anymore, uh, which you know can range from I've seen as high as $15,000. And so it's gonna take me a lot of $20 bills to reach $15,000. So I think it's, you know, it's designed to be more of an equitable process. You know, people argue equality and what's fair, but you know, our roads are only as good as they are and as long as they are by the traffic that's on them and what generates that traffic. My residential neighborhood isn't gonna probably see the heavy traffic that a, a business area would see. And so, you know, trying to come up with a, a way to relate maybe the traffic counts versus, you know, the residential customers covering that all the time. And, and I think it's gonna be a little more equitable. And, you know, our business customers are not exempt from special, utility, special assessments either. So this utility can help them also. Yeah, indeed, because uh, as you, met, you met, brought up a great point, a lot of $20 bills to get to $15,000 uh, mm -hmm. over you know a 10-year period, um, however long the special assessments uh, go out in Wisconsin Rapids. I've seen 10 years, I've seen longer, mm -hmm. but it's something that everybody is using. And what is one thing that uh, people in Wisconsin complain about uh, more than anything else, it's not the 30 degree weather that we have been seeing here in the middle of April, which uh, for some is a big complaining point, it's the roads. And we are seeing, um, it's been a topic at the statewide level ever since I've moved up here four and a half years ago. And I know they've been talking about it even before then. Yep, so this yep. is a way that the city can really do something about that. Yeah, so roughly prior to the utility, we were, we were doing about a, a, just over a mile, mile, mile and a half of new road construction each year. And with the utility now, because they've added in some extra milling overlay and in our budgeting process, we have a milling overlay program and then through a degradation fee. So like if somebody cuts into our road, they have to pay a fee, a degradation fee and all that money is gonna go into the milling overlay. So we should be hitting about 2.3 miles worth of road work every year now. So that's gonna help 
us, um, you know, stay on top of our roads a little bit better and hopefully ride quality. Cause it's, like you said, you know, it's, it's potholes and ride qualities that mm-hmm. uh, we all seem to notice quite a bit. And if we can do mill and overlay to improve that ride quality, as long as the infrastructure is good, you know, that's only going to benefit everybody. And as somebody that drives highway 29 going West out of Wausau quite often going to the twin cities or South Dakota, if you can do something about the Westbound lanes <laughs> on Highway 29 between Wausau and the Marathon County line, I will be forever grateful. (laughs) Yeah, it's amazing how much uh, quality of roads impact our Mm -hmm. lives and the quality of them because we get excited about it. I think I think that's out of your jurisdiction, though, but if you can start moving that up the chain of command, I will, again, be ever grateful. Uh, Talking about uh, another thing that you've, uh, that's one thing I should say that you've kind of you're one of the leaders on now in the state. You're one of the first uh, you, first municipalities to put something like this in place. I think you said Oshkosh has a similar uh, setup yeah, I think as well. Pewaukee has something. Okay. There's there's a couple out there, so it's still bridging new ground. And mm-hmm. you know, there's there's questions, and you know, for us, it works right now, and and hopefully that uh, this plan can keep going forward because it is. It, it impacts so many lives, and especially uh, fixed income seniors, and you know, you know, job markets, and, and this is a lot more reasonable, and I think more equitable. Yeah, indeed. And uh, one thing though that you're copying that uh, a lot of people in the state are are starting to pick up on uh, Wisconsin Rapids no mo may. No moment. Up. Uh, I think <laughs> by now, if you've been paying attention, I think you kind of get the gist of it. You don't mow your lawn for the month of May, so that way there's some pollinator habitats to, to help out some of the small insects and other uh, creatures that uh, that help us have the vegetation that we have up here in Wisconsin. Uh, started in the Oshkosh area. It's been growing over the last four to five years. You guys are picking up on it this year now. What is the interest, Ben? Uh, and uh, again, how do you, is this just something where you say, okay, three of my buddies are doing this now. So we're going to put it in now too, or did the, the citizens actually come up and, uh, and request it? Yeah, we had requests last year actually, and we weren't able to get it together in time. So as it was approaching, it was kind of discussed, should we do this? And so we took a, a, a resolution as a common council to see if they were interested in supporting No Mo May and they were. And so we've been kind of getting citizens ready, getting them signed up and getting yard signs together for them. And uh, so hopefully when May comes, we'll help those bee pollinators. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do it. I don't want bees flying around my house. I don't like bees one bit. Um, if my neighbor does, that's, that's, that's fine. I'm not going to be the one to, uh, uh, to do it though. Um, but y- yeah, it's, it seems like this has been, you know, again, part of the pun, a grassroots effort statewide that all of a sudden now, uh, people are implementing whether they say, you know, okay, we support this or not. We're at least giving people the option to, uh, to, yeah. to participate if they, if they want. Yeah. You know, if they don't want to participate, mow your lawn and that's fine. And if you want to take advantage of this, yeah, we'll support it. There's a, we've got a few locations of city property that we're not going to mow either. Um, so yeah, the city's going to participate where they can. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how successful it is. Yeah, indeed. Uh, you've got, uh, and you've got a decent number of residents that are signed up already, correct? Correct. It's like 120 some, I believe. And uh, so we're trying to debate because it is pretty early on yet, whether or not we need to make sure we have more signage for mm-hmm. those people that still want to potentially sign up in the next few weeks. And one thing that's important for residents to remember is you do have to sign up. You can't correct. just not Mo, you do have to tell the city this is my intention. Yeah, because if you don't sign up, then then obviously you are in violation of city ordinance, and you have a very good chance you might see one of our inspectors stopping by, and eventually the city will come and take care of it for you if you choose not to mow. Yeah, indeed, and that's a bill that you uh, you don't want, no. to, especially if you have a lawnmower and uh, the ability to uh, do it yourself, Absolutely. because. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a very unwelcome bill. So uh, is this going to be an annual thing then for the city of Wisconsin Rapids, or is this uh, one year and we will take a look in the middle of June and see if it's going to get renewed? 
Yeah, we hope to, to continue. We're, we're asking residents to have signs to hold their sign for next year and uh, they can reuse it once they sign up. And yeah, so we're hoping that uh, it's well received and there's no issues and we can continue going forward. Then one thing you mentioned uh, creating pollinator habitat uh, in the city, you know, you go to bigger cities. Uh, I always say Minneapolis, St. Paul, uh, that's my uh, my uh, not exact old stomping grounds, but it's a place I like to visit uh, on a free, fairly frequent basis. You go there, they've got parks where the signs are up. You know, this is a pollinator habitat. We let these natural grasses grow on purpose. Is that uh, something that you're maybe going to consider then for some of your city parks or public areas, uh, creating some of that habitat that is purposely left untouched uh, year round. So yeah, we've been talking about, you know, coming up with other ideas, how we can participate more and also through education. So this, this uh, Nomo May is gonna develop over time and, and we'll see what it can grow into because there are other opportunities out there. And I think by, by choosing areas where you choose not to mow, you know, it, you have to find areas that make sense, but by not mowing areas, frees up time so you can be doing other activities or other maintenance type activities. So it's trying to find that balance in those right spots to, that makes sense not to mow and, and be able to utilize those resources elsewhere. Something that you never thought that you would have to, uh, to discuss as mayor, correct? Which areas of the city it makes sense to not mow? In which areas Correct. it makes sense to mow, right? That's that. Absolutely. That's not on the bingo card. It is not. <laughs> it is, it, nope, it is not. No, it is not. But hey, it's it's something that we're talking about now. And again, uh, it's something that's a little more fun to talk about maybe than uh, what's going to go into the Verso plant uh, eventually, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, I don't know, looking out my window and looking at it, it's, you know, there's always hopes and there's always, but we have to find somebody who wants to buy it and then wants to do something with it. And, you know, the city has a redevelopment grant that they, they were awarded from the federal government and also through some state grant dollars to try to do a redevelopment, um, you know, process to see what we could potentially use it for or what it could be made into. But, you know, as, as this new company has officially taken over, you know, we're hoping that maybe they'll, there'll be some added interest in there by because of converting all the other mills over to brown paper that they have, that, you know, our, our coated paper might, you know, have, have some more interest now versus before. Yeah, indeed, because I was, uh, that was the last thing I was going to bring up, because again, it, uh, the, the sales gone through, they have acknowledged that the Wisconsin Rapids mill is there. They have not acknowledged what they are going to do with it. Correct. Have you had any sort of discussions with uh, with the new company, the Scandinavian company that's taken over? And I mean, have they tipped their hand, so to speak, as to what could happen? Yeah, so we haven't had any direct com conversation with them. I think, you know, their priority right now, and I, I don't know for sure, but their operating mills are probably making sure that, you know, those things are being attended to, first of all. And then hopefully we'll we'll kind of move up on that list of discussion and uh, what potentially the futures could be. Because I assume that the first priority is to keep it as a paper mill, because obviously the infrastructure is there already. Exactly. And if you were to have to say, tear it down for some sort of, uh, for lack of a better term, mixed use development, which is mm -hmm. of course all the raise in urban planning, of course, that would be a hefty, hefty bill to pay. Yeah. I, I you know, it's set up to be a paper mill and it's what hundred and some years of a paper mill. You know, if we could find a paper mill use for it, that would by far be the best. And, you know, I, obviously with a running paper mill, you know, it, it dramatically, you know, it's tied with our, our timber industry and the forest products. And, you know, we have trees in Wisconsin, lots of trees, and then mm -hmm. managing our forest has to be a priority and, you know, finding use for our timber it has to be that priority also. So, you know, it, it goes hand in hand. If we can get that mill running, it's going to help out a lot of industries in the state, you know, from trucking to uh, the loggers and all of them. Mm -hmm. So at this time, though, there is really no timeline as to when there could be some sort of resolution to the situation. None at all. 
And there's no cryptocurrency being mined there either, correct? There is no cryptocurrency being mined there at this time, nope. And if anybody can understand what cryptocurrency is and how we can spend it, please let Mayor Shane and I know. And we will have a show idea. <laughs> exactly. It is not uh, well, my area of expertise. Not at all either. <laughs> So we appreciate the time. Uh, again, congratulations. Another two years here. We'll look forward to, uh, to chatting again at least uh, 24 or so uh, more times here over the next uh, two years. Yeah, I appreciate it, Michael. Thank you very much.